Initially launched as the HD7815, the Pitcairn GPU we are going to review today had two more rebrands, the R7265, the card that we'll review today, and the R7370. But just because it's served under three video card lineups, does it mean that it's a good card for budget gaming? I will not cover the details of this GPU, you can check them out in the GPU-Z window seen on screen right now. But I will mention that its effective performance is similar to the Bonaire XTX that powered the R7 to 60X reviewed previously. The TDP however is a tad higher at 150 watts. To manage this amount of heat, Sapphire opted for a dual fan solution, with a generous fin stack and a cold plate that contacts not just the GPU but also the memory chips. In heaven, the GPU warmed up to 73C for a delta over ambient of almost 50C. The card was tested using the same Z230 workstation from HP, using the i7-4770 equivalent Xeon CPU and 32GB of DDR3 running in dual channel at 1600MHz. Rainbow Six Siege is the first in the gaming results section. 1080 resolution and 100% render scale will have you believe that this will provide a 60fps all of the time kind of experience, thanks to its 1% loss value of 58fps and the average of 74. However, having some performance margin is not a bad thing and any of the following settings combinations will provide just that. I would not go to 720 resolution and 50% render scale though, it's not really needed. Doom Eternal is unfortunately a reason to go for the R7 to 60X instead. The artifact in scene on screen right now seems to be representative for the GCN1 family of cards. None of the GCN2 ones behave like this. Pity. Fallout 4, however, runs quite well on the R7265. 1080 resolution in high settings will give an average of 35 FPS and 1% loss of 32. And this is in Diamond City, one of the more demanding areas of the game. There is no reason to drop the resolution below that, unless you go for the highest settings. Multiplayer titles that have a wide open game world present a particular challenge. You need both high FPS and a high pixel count. Apex Legends is one of those titles and while then the resolution looks appealing, with average of 77 FPS, the 1% loss in the mid 50s might become a problem. 1600 by 900 seems to provide a good compromise with the metrics at 96 and 65 FPS respectively, while 720 resolution will sacrifice screen resolution for performance. Between low settings and low settings, consider the latter when playing Shadow of the Tomb Raider. The volumetric lighting and the presence of shadows is worth the drop of the resolution from 1080 to 1600 by 900. The latter runs at 48 FPS on average and almost 30 for the 1% lows, while the former at 54 and 37 FPS respectively. This is not the first time Counter-Strike 2 displays a platform bottleneck, and I'm somewhat happy to see the R7 to 65 managing to stay ahead of the CPU at lower settings, but with FSR disabled. At 1080 resolution, the card average is 114 FPS and provides 1% lows in the mid 90s. Same scenario in the dust but this time at lower resolutions have both these metrics in the same ballpark. Borderlands 3 displays the best example of trading resolution for enhanced visuals. Here are the settings where the R7265 manages to stay on the single player playable experience. 1080 resolution and very low quality settings will get you an average of 46 and 1% loss of 34 FPS. Same resolution but low settings will drop that to 39 and 29 FPS respectively. Increasing the settings to medium requires the drop on resolution to 1600 by 900 to remain playable. And if the 28 FPS for the 1% lows is too low, then 720 resolution will raise that to 33 and the average to 45 FPS. Xdefined gets playable frame rates on this card at 1080 resolution and low settings, with average going to the mid 80s and the 1% lows reaching 59. As the resolution decreases, the frame rates increase to 109 FPS for the average and 74 for the 1% lows at 1600 by 900, and to 144 and 91 FPS respectively at 720 resolution. Resident Evil 4 will run out of VRAM at 720 resolution and priority as performance preset. FSR was disabled and the R7265 managed an average of 36 FPS. But those VRAM requirements, about 3GB if I'm to believe the figures shown on the settings dialog, do have a say when it comes to the 1% lows. They are stuck to 20 FPS. 
Fortnite shows the same behavior for the 1% lows as with the previously reviewed card. They stay stuck somewhere between 60 and 75 FPS at all three tested resolutions. I ran the game in performance mode with the rendering distance set to far, and while the average FPS did increase from 93 FPS at 1080 resolution to 148 at 720, the 1% lows did not, at least not by the same percentages. I got somewhat similar behavior in Fortnite Reload, with the averages increasing from 165 FPS at 1080 to 196 FPS at 720 resolution. The 1% loss, however, stayed in a fairly narrow interval between 75 and 88 FPS. When playing Terminator Resistance, my suggestion is to stick to 1080 resolution and low settings. The average is in the mid 60s and the 1% lows in the high 40s, which is perfectly fine for what's effectively a single player stealth game. The 720 resolution numbers are 107 FPS for the average and 77 for the 1% lows. There is a bit of room to tweak visuals here. Overwatch 2 can be played at 1080 resolution and low settings. Both the average FPS of 126 and the 1% lows of 97 are quite adequate for this game. You can trade the resolution for FPS, as seen on screen. I'm not quite sure, however, if 243 FPS for the average and almost 200 FPS for the 1% lows is worth halving the pixel count on the screen. If I'm considering Dota 2 as a binary test, then the R7265 can play it comfortably at 1080 resolution and low settings, but with the rendering scale pulled back to 100%. The average FPS and the 1% lows of 89 and 49 FPS respectively seem to be less relevant for this game. Lower tier GPUs can get even better number. This makes this type of performance metric somewhat decoupled from the GPU performance. One can play control at 1080 resolution and low settings. Both the average FPS of 46 and the 1% loss of 35 are acceptable for this game. Lowering the resolution to 720 increases those to 86 and 62 respectively. Just like with Borderlands 3, there is a bit of room to trade off resolution for increased visuals while keeping a playable frame rate. I went for 1080 resolution and low settings when testing the card in GTA 5. This way I'd get like for like comparisons with other cards. The R7265 averaged 117 FPS in the last canned benchmark and the 1% low stayed about 70 FPS. Both metrics hint that there is some performance headroom to increase the visuals. The Mariana Mission in Warframe closes the benchmark section of this video. The card managed 180 FPS for the average and 114 FPS for the 1% lows. The game is an online PvE, so there is quite a bit of performance to be traded for better visuals. The second category of favorite GPUs after the no power connectors one is the single 6 pin connector. While cards from the first one are the means to transform office PCs into entry level gaming machines, cards from the latter are a good fit to my Z230 workstation using its original PSU that has, you've guessed it, a single 6 pin PCIe power connector. Now, there are quite a few other cards that will provide better performance for sometimes less power draw. But in a market where GT 1030s will go as high as 40 USD, paying the equivalent of 30 for an R7265 is not that bad of a deal. There is another variant of Pitcairn GPU out there that carried not 3, but 4 names. We'll have a video on it soon, make sure to subscribe if this sounds interesting. As for this video, we're done. Thanks for watching, I hope you liked it and I'll